and I have uh, plenty of money in my my contractual and my budget for it. That's what I'm looking at. So. I wouldn't think there'd be 465 feet of that room around this building. Yeah. It's just surprising. Mm -hmm. It is. That's a long ways. Yeah. yeah. So you say he's not going to go into any contract. Well, we're going to concrete. We're going to go out and go along the back side of this. <coughs> right. Wall. So the the main line um, comes out of uh, like the boiler room down there, out in the back. So he'll tie into that, which will be responsible for. We'll need to have that pipe cut off on the inside. And I talked to Ed about doing that and having it tapped. So he'll go out the back. He'll go. Um, to the west and then to the east with new pipe. So, and it will go on the other side of the handicapped driveway. But he's so, still got to come under concrete. Yeah, he's going to put a sleeve in there, I think he said. He, yeah, because we have to come up one way or the other to get this one patch there. But he's going to put a sleeve. I don't understand completely about how they do that, but he's going to put a sleeve in there so we'd have access to it, is what he told me. So. Bore it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to bore it. Yeah, they'll there. bore it. Yeah. Well, I move that we hire lappy sprinklers to put a new sprinkler system around the courthouse for 97.59. Second. This has been moved and seconded to hire lampy sprinklers to redo the sprinkler system. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, 497.59. Aye. And, and then he, um, oh, he would like a deposit down on that and then as soon as he gets the deposit then he'll um, He'll get us on the he'll get us on the list. He does have a list. It might not be till September before he gets here, simply because and that would be fine too, because we're not it's gonna be a big job and we don't want the sprinkler sh shut down like for a, like a whole week because then our grass will burn up too. So but he said he would try to get to us as soon as possible. So NC need that right away. Well, as, if, as soon as we okay, sign we the contract. Oh, okay. We yeah. need a motion for uh, $4,880 for a deposit. That's a move. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded to put a deposit of $4,800 uh, for the sprinkler system. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Scott, do you want the original contract? It's 4880 Okay. box the other day and it was just a complete mess on the, the west side. Yeah. Every time I have to work on my sprinkler system, I'm like, oh. Yeah. I just leave it to Jeff. Yeah. It's like solenoids and valves and mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, that, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I understand now what he's going to put a sleeve in and run his pipe through that sleeve and then if it ruptures in there, he can pull the pipe out and put a new piece in. Yeah. I just go bad nose. Yeah, that's what we should have told her. Here's a you can buy two hundred and forty to six feet of. <laughs> oh boy. Get after it. I have a part time guy.
the get up in there the latest. <clears throat> that allied, allied oil and supply, that was for I think, a couple of different kinds of oil and transmission fluid, bulk refill. Uh, on our containers there in the shop. One of the bigger ones. And then uh, Schaefer, that's going to be grease, and then the big part of that's our fuel treatment for diesel, and that probably should get us, I think, through the end of the year, depending on how things go in the fall, early winter, how much we're running. Bumper to bumpers, just a whole variety of repairs on uh, some of our Kenworth. I had a seat suspension bag replaced, that was $360. Several air, air filters, which I'm surprised how expensive those things have gotten on, on uh, one of the John Deere's, $160 and $130 for air filters. Didn't, didn't you say you had to get those from the from, from Caterpillar? From Caterpillar. Well, for the graders and any of the cat equipment, we use cat filters. Okay. And see on the locale, that was the mower blades, and that should be a, enough to get us through the season. Um, and then a bunch of repairs on some of the mowers, U joints, uh, U joints and yokes. Uh, and that came from Yoast. I don't remember ever spending this much in oil. Just kind of spooky. Well, it's yeah, I know bulk containers yeah. and gotcha. Okay. And hopefully we're you know we should be good to go for a while. Yeah. <clears throat> any, any other questions? Or move along. Leslie, did you have a chance to do anything with the border agreement? Not yet. That, that's fine. I will, I will get to it. I have it in my to-do. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> I, I'm just going to check. And we'll, uh, that, that has to do with uh, KDOT wanted us to essentially come up with a formal agreement with Nebraska. There's two bridges up that uh, were replaced here a while back, uh, back in the 80s, I think. or It's been, been a while. Uh, and we had an, just a informal agreement at the time that they were able to get a better deal on the bridges so they own the bridges and they do the inspections and we do the maintenance but it's just been a there's been no formal agreement ever drafted up and KDOT would like us to come up with a formal agreement and so that's what we're pursuing and then we'll present it to both uh, you and Dundee right County on, and then, right on the state line now. yeah and we're just gonna we agreed I'm talking to Kent up there uh, we agree just to keep things the same. We just need to put it in writing. That's kind of the gist of it. So this memorandum from 2018, am I supposed to somehow incorporate something like that too, or is it just this? I think just the, just the one, one example I gave you, yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, I think well, that would be sufficient. I okay. guess I could double check with uh, Donna, I think is her name. Okay. Yeah, I will have this by the next week. Okay. All right. And let's see, I think one last thing is I did get some uh, figures on uh, for our John Deere 7510, whether we replace it or, or repair. Oh, on the transmission. Right. Okay. Um, I did get some quotes on a couple of comparable tractors, one from Yoast, one from American Implement. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys want to look at those or not. Okay. Sure. And the one thing I would like to probably change on here is, is to keep the Alice and just use that out at the landfill. Uh, then we're not tying up a tractor and somebody, it, it's just easier for Byron, he's there and when he, he just has an hour or two of mowing or maybe running the uh, speedy uh, mover, you know, smooth up his roads, he just can fit it in when it works for him. Uh, we're only getting 2,500 on trade on the, 
on the Alice that run. So I think we'd like to hang on to that. So both these quotes, uh, you'd be, I guess, adding on the 2,500 to the balance there, balance due. Steve, is this for us to keep? You can, yeah. I made enough copies. Read through these now, but no, that's, uh, I guess just for today, I just so you can see the uh, on the front page on both of those <coughs> the kind of total figures how they came in. Uh, John Deere came in quite a bit lower, but we're also getting more for the trade on the uh, on the more New Holland, more. yeah, that we'll be trading, and also on the on the seventy five ten. That was a big part, and then the base price of the tractor was a little more with you. Know, So just, I guess, looking at it from above or whatever you want to call it, it you're looking at uh, if you add back in that 2,500, it's just a little under 35,000 on the uh, John Deere tractor for the 6135. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to do repairs on that 7510, I, I wouldn't recommend repairing the transmission. I would recommend a remand, but then you're you're in the 22 to almost 27,000, depending mm -hmm. on how that goes. Uh, and then you've also got a tractor that still has 14,000 hours on it, mm -hmm. which is a little high on a for a tractor. Mm -hmm. uh, the quotes uh, good through the end of July on the John Deere, and I think uh, I thought I looked, saw a date on the. New Holland, I'm winning it. I'm not seeing that now. I thought that went for 30 days, but I'm not seeing what that is on there. So again, I mean, nothing we have to decide today. Uh, just that's kind of where we're at. I, not real thrilled about spending 35,000 on a out of my you know, equipment fund. We, we have it. We could do it. I just would like to hang on to as much as I can for next year. We really do need to address our uh, graders, units 101 or, or 106, on do a, either a trade or a rebuild on, on one of those mm -hmm. units next year. So did you, we talked about selling these like on option time or instead of trading yeah. there? <clears throat> well, in, in my view, I, I think uh, what we'd be getting uh, from John Deere, I think that's a pretty fair price. Sure, we might get a little more, we might get a little less. Mm -hmm. So, I, and then plus what they're giving us for the, the 7510, I think is, is a pretty reasonable figure. I, I It'd be a little bit of a gamble to try that. Not saying it couldn't work in our favor. You said it'll be good until when? Uh, we've got July 31st is when the uh, for, uh, the quote from John Deere. On that. So we can mull it over. And that's when you're leaning towards now, John Deere. I, I I would I would lean towards replacing it. Trade off the New Holland and the old 7510. Uh, for the John Deere 6135. So the John Deere we had 2500 on, but we don't for Yos, correct? The 2500 for the Alice? Yeah. Well, right, Ed, from both Yost and, oh. yeah, and John Deere, they had uh, the, the okay, Alice on there. So you'd have to, you know, at the bottom there, you'd add basically 2,500 to that. We, okay. would, we would not be. Initially, I asked them to include the Alice in the trade and just see what they would gotcha. give it uh, to us, you know, what they give us on the trade. But Sorry, I just wanted to get it right. And which one did you say you wanted to keep for the landfill? The Alice the tractor. Alice. That's what's out there right now. Okay. And he's, he's willing to use that. And I think it. Like I said, it's just it's a little more efficient to, well, quite a bit more to have it available to him there. And then when he has the window to go do it, he can do it. 
instead of pulling somebody off from wherever to have them mow, you know, road all the yeah. way over and, and take care of, you know, two hours worth of mowing. So John Deere is going to give us 15 for the, the John Deere trade-in, and the ghost would be five? Correct. And then both of them were 2,500, which we're not doing. And then... And then the New Holland. New Holland, they're going to give 30 at Ghost and... And 47, 47 five. at John Deere. Yeah, it looks like Yost would be 40700 40, and the John Deere would be $34,790.94 is what I come up with if you had the 2500 right here. Am I doing Well, it? I think now because they're, they're told they on, the, on the Yost, uh, the New Holland was uh, 865 was the trade difference. And then plus you'd have to add in the 2500 so it would actually be 89 Where did I get that number? And again, that's you know the. Just oh, I took the trade minus what they were asking, what it, the yeah. price was here, which was thirty, thirty-eight twenty. I mean, they're they're comparable tractors. I'm sure the New Holland's a, a great tractor, uh, but just if we're looking at the bottom line of the price, it's cheaper, better to go with the John Deere. Yeah. I don't have to make a decision no, on this. No, I'm not asking for a yeah. decision okay. today. I, and then we'd also we'd, we'd be going down a tractor in our inventory, but we're also looking at when the airport gets their tractor. Uh, that's one tractor that we won't have tied up there for part of the year. <coughs> so that'll help oh. work in our favor a little bit. I see. I thought this trades would never mind. Okay. <laughs> but we can all get back with you guys at the end of the month. Okay. Back one more time or again. Uh, and then I had one other item. I was still looking for a, a tanker trailer. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at one, in, or will be, up in uh, Ogallala. It's going to be similar to the last one. The last one, they, they went over what we were at for a dollar amount. It's a little older unit, but I would, I would request that uh, we could stay with the 10000 uh, but just have it motion that you know not to exceed ten thousand for a tanker trailer. You know, I just I keep looking, and you know, so if this next one doesn't work out, and one comes in between meetings, and I you know can't yeah. get together with you guys, we could bid on it. So if that's possible, I would yeah, request well, that I, we. Well, I I would make a motion that we. Uh, Give you permission to bid on, on a tanker trailer for, for not to exceed ten thousand. Second. It's been moved and seconded to bid on a tanker not more than ten thousand. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All okay. opposed. Thank you. And then uh, pickups. I started looking. We're going to need to probably get a used pickup or two. I'll talk to Cody. I know he mentioned it all back, but they'll be moving, I think, uh, one of their trucks through. I don't know how soon that will happen. Uh, but I would like to, that eventually we're going to have to replace a couple of our, our pickups. Now we've got one with, got pointing towards some serious transmission issues. And uh, that's probably one of the first, I think it's unit number 28. Uh, we're probably going to auction that one off if we could find something else to replace it. <coughs> and again, we're just looking at, you know, a 15-year-old pickup or something, 10-year-old at the newest, and you know, yeah, hopefully new something. New ones, but he's putting a new engine in one. But try and keep that under 10000 preferably in the, you know, six to 8000 That might be asking too much to get something that's, I mean, it'll probably need work, anything that's going to come in that low, but going to be difficult for anything less than $5,000. i am not sure you're going to get much no. <laughs> get right what now. You pay for it. I mean, five, ten years ago, it might have been different, but mm. not, not in this market. Um, but we can, I'll, I'll keep looking and try and see what's available out there and get a little more firm figure maybe on what we can get approval for and go from there. But that's, I think that's all I've got today.
Thanks, Steve. Okay. All right. <coughs> All right. Have a good weekend, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks. We're ready, please. That's how much we spent in oil. Seventy-one hundred dollars. In the last what? Last pay period. That's what we paid for oil. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. All am well. Thank you. How are you guys? Good. That's a beautiful day. Yes. All right. I am Andrea Cross. I'm the developer. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm the development director at Options. Is there anybody that's not familiar with what Options does? I'm pretty much not unfamiliar. With You're unfamiliar? Them. Okay. We provide the domestic violence and sexual assault services for Northwest Kansas. Our service area is the Northwest 18 counties, so over six, down three, that chunk of, of counties. Uh, interesting fact about that area, it is larger than the states of Connecticut, New Jersey, Rhode Island, and Delaware combined. Mm. Wow. It's a little over 17,000 square miles. Um, we have an office in Hayes. We have a satellite office in Colby. And we also have a shelter home in the Ellis County area that can house up to 14 people. Um, we also provide services for... Uh, teen dating violence, uh, elder abuse, stalking, um, and human trafficking. Um, so uh, some of those services can involve safety planning, making sure that someone has an idea of what to do next if they're, they haven't decided to leave yet. Um, and many people, 7 out of 10, either go back to their abuser or stay with their abuser. So, um, you know, that's a, a vital thing that we do um, to help people be safe. Um, we are also, uh, so we're celebrating our 40th anniversary. We started out as an agency with a group of Fort Hayes professors and some of their friends that uh, said, you know, somebody ought to do something. And then they said, you know, I guess we're somebody and started housing people on their couches when it was necessary. And then they built, uh, started the, the nonprofit agency and built it in, we've continued to grow uh, into the agency that we are now. Um, some of the things that we have been working on, um, we are getting ready to build shelter into the basement of our Colby office. Um, it is an unused space that actually has plumbing and everything already there, so, um, it will alleviate some of the overflow on our shelter house. Um, I did bring uh, copies of the <coughs> Cheyenne County information. I don't know if you were able to send that to everybody, Scott. I, I believe last meeting we might have. Yeah, you probably have it, but I, I sent you extra copies, some brochures, um, some posters about my mobile options. I'll tell you about that in a second. And then I also included some of our tear-off sheets these are really good in bathrooms mm -hmm. and private spaces so that uh, people don't have to be seen taking information about options because there's still sort of a stigma. Um, people don't want their family necessarily to know that they're going through that or um, their friends, uh, their business community, that and sort of abuser. thing. Huh? Or their abuser. Or their abuser, yeah. They don't want their abuser to know they're seeking services. That sends off a whole... Uh, cascade of, of situations. Um, one of the other things that we are working on right now is developing a lethality examination so that uh, we're doing that with the Hayes Police Department and also Cedric County, uh, Wichita area, and Johnson County. Um, so that way when officers respond to a domestic situation, um, they can help their, the, the survivor understand how much danger they're actually in at the moment. Um, because many times when people are in a domestic situation, they've been in it a long time. Right. Um, you know, by the time they actually call the police, they've probably suffered a lot. And they don't understand and, and maybe write off in their brain a little bit about, you know, how much danger they're, they're truly in. Um, 
The statistics in this report that you received are not last year's, but the year before. Okay. And the reason we do that is because that's how the KBI releases their data. So that way you can compare statistics to statistics. Um, everybody always talks about how we were going to go back to normal after COVID. Um, what we have found is we have a new normal. Our services have not decreased. Um, in fact, our shelter services have increased um, even beyond what you see here. Um, and while no one from Cheyenne County utilized the services in this time frame, I'd have to go into our data and, and look about this year. But I do know that in the first seven years that Jennifer Hecker has been our executive director, um, we spent close to $4,000 on shelter. Last year, we spent close to $80,000. Um, in some counties, you know, it's the equivalent of housing people up, up even over a year's worth of time. Not necessarily always the same person, but um, when our shelter is full, we overflow to hotels. So that's what drives that number. Um, some of the hotels that we work with are super great. Some of them see it as, oh, we're going to have a bed night. And they, they don't give us a break, but we still have to keep people safe, so we do what we can. Um, we shuffled around a lot. Uh, we were able to pl apply for some COVID money that was there. Um, and we had some donors that came through in a big way for the survivors. Um, so um, well, since I am the development director, it's my job to ask you for money. Um, our ask is for $2,000. I know you provided uh, 1500 last year. Um, and we appreciate every nickel and dime and penny we, we can receive. Um, but we you know, ran some numbers, and based on the county's population, that equates to less than a dollar, about 75 cents per person per year for Cheyenne County to, to receive services. And we provide those services free of charge, confidentially, um, and without question to who somebody is, whether they are purple, green, um, boy, girl, transgender, uh, Lutheran, Catholic. We, we, don't, we don't make any, any distinction between who somebody is. Right. We, we provide those services. And that's a federal requirement for some of the federal dollars we receive. Mm -hmm. um, so... Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? I don't. No? Okay. Well, I certainly appreciate your time. I'll Thank leave this information up. with you guys. And uh, if somebody, you know, um, I'm sure you guys are going through your budget process. And uh, if you uh, would choose to give us money and somebody would question why are you giving options money, you can certainly share with them mm -hmm. that information. Sounds okay. good. Thank All you. right. Well, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming out. I, yeah, uh, absolutely. I ask this of a lot of people that come in here, and, and we are in a corner. I know we are. But we give a lot of money to different organizations. It seems like they're all in Colby or Hayes. Really? Yeah. And they are. So they, let they, me, they let generate money out of this deal. You know, the, the hotel is the. We, we use hotels throughout our whole service area. We try to keep someone as close to where they can be if we can. Um, but I just wish once in a while we could have somebody live here and travel out of here. Yeah, I, maintaining an, we're, yeah, maintaining we're an office. But so during COVID, we were like, okay, we got 18 counties to serve. What are we going to do? Right. Uh, we developed a mobile advocate initiative. And we have an advocate that comes to every county that doesn't have an office at least twice per month. And uh, right now in the western nine counties, we're hiring for that position right now because we had an internal promotion and then the advocate that was coming out here moved over. And so the person that's going to be in the western nine is going to be out of the Colby office so they don't have, you know, they can travel easily to the counties, but we had, according to the schedule that we had built, uh, someone was in Cheyenne County the second and fourth Mondays of the month from 1 to 3 p.m. at the St. Francis Public Library. So <coughs> if someone did have a problem traveling or, and even if, uh, 
you know, they're like, I can't get to Hayes. I can't get to Colby. We will come to them. Yeah. And even if that's in the middle of the night. But, um, you know, we really try to make sure that we have a presence in all of the counties that we serve. I, I, I just asked. If I understand you show up and you're here. Yeah. But we never, ever seem to ever have an office here. We never seem to have anybody live here. Yeah. And travel to other counties. They always travel into us. And we're lucky if we get one meal out of them. Probably not even any fuel. We don't. Mm -hmm. uh, Maintaining an office. I know. Is, is know. expensive. And, you yes, know, we try is. to. And I, I'm not saying. But yeah, if, no, if, I. If you, if you look, almost every outfit that comes in here wanting money, they have an office in Colby or Hayes. Yeah, because those are the two largest <laughs> cities, you know. I mean, and, you know, I live in Russell, and mm -hmm. based on the number of services used, I mean, you could justify putting an office in Russell. They're our second most utilized city, they have more oh. services even than Colby. But with the proximity I'm glad to we Hayes, have the services. I'm just tickled to death we have the services. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I just wish our taxpayers could benefit once in a while. Yeah, you know, and and if somebody from you know, this is close enough to Colby that somebody could live in this county and and work in, in the Colby office or work out of the Colby office that it wouldn't. If the right person applies, we don't care where they live. Their commute is their business. So. Um, yeah. uh, you know, other than you know, trying to have a, a response time, right. um, but I, I I do understand your concern, and that that is why we address that with the mobile advocate because before that we you know. Oh, I know you try. I, I don't <coughs> know, but we're just in the wrong spot. Oh, I I I understand we that because we'd be better off if we was with Nebraska and Colorado. In an area like that, and depending we could on be the where, center. yeah, depending <laughs> on where your cities are, yeah, I mean, I I understand that as well because you know even even being in Russell, being that far further east, yeah, east. we still always say, well, nobody wants to come past Salina, right. or nobody wants to leave Topeka, so <clears throat> yeah, Western Kansas is it's a vast area, and for many things, we are underserved. Yeah, so. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I had to drive safe it. on your way back. Thank you. I'm going to go I'm to Colby and down. work out of Colby okay, today because tonight I'm going to go to Atwood and talk to their city council. Yep. So. Well, you All right. have a handful to put there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you. like it to think about it. So. I, uh, there is not one. You deal with it all the time. All the time. And guess what? We get to travel everywhere to go to meetings. We get it. Years ago, kind of at the state, we come, I started saying I'm from Wow Land, West of Wanamaker. <laughs> 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 I'm going to ask you because I've had somebody, well, Terry Riger, uh, road signs. Do we need to have somebody go out and start looking at road signs? We've got, he says we've got some signs tore down and some signs missing. Do you know? I mean, the road signs like that. Yeah. I mean, for ambulances and fire trucks. and. If they're missing, that's a problem. I'm not aware of what signs are missing. But if well, I... But that's what Terry told me now, and I said, I'll look into it. What I'm thinking, do we need to hire somebody to drive around and check and put new signs up if we need them? Or, and then where can we get the money? Can it come out of 911 funds? No. 911 funds could be utilized for the initial acquisition of them, but, but not the maintenance. Not the maintenance. That's my understanding. Well, if you get it together, we have the ARPA money. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. The other we thing can hire you to drive around. Hey. The other thing we're recommending to too is the address <coughs> markers. It's been long enough. A few of them are missing. Plus, we've had the houses built and stuff like that, and that's not. 
So see, we need to address that. Yeah. And I don't know if we do it through EM at emergency med for 911 or. So initially that project was done through the 911, but that has changed some. Um, I don't know if there needs to be money put in like road and bridge for the signs. Well, I know they have road signs, but that's different, I believe. Right. But, yeah. But now, whether or how many is missing, but even if five or six of them are missing, we probably need to get it. And then the, you're right; those little blue ones that go on each of the—they know then they're at the right residence. Yeah, we have that. I know we have run into a few of those, and they're gone. Gone. I'll visit the Steve. I'd appreciate it if you would. Thank you. How are you today? Good. How are you guys? Good. Okay, so real quick, I just wanted to um, update on a couple things. I've not heard any official word on the flood damage from uh, back in May. I'm going to say that I'm my gut's telling me it's probably unlikely that we'll get any reimbursement because we haven't been asked to get more damage assessments and finalize stuff. And so I'm, I'm thinking we probably haven't met overall the threshold in the state. So, um, but again, I've not had any official word on that. July 5th, I have the uh, Kansas Emergency Management Association meeting. Uh, it'll be in Salina, not Topeka. And I'm not getting a hotel room or anything. I'll just leave early that morning and go to that. So, okay. um, And then obviously, I know you guys are aware of this, but I guess just to let you know, between the flooding and the Rollins County School thing, I'm going to be on the road a lot, and there's just a lot going on right now. So um, working with that. So. And then I would like to request um, 15 minutes of executive session for non-elected personnel. I'll so move. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to have 10 minutes or 15 minutes of executive session for non elected personnel. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? 